Hello and welcome to the Researchers Report. I hope everyone's doing all right out there tonight. Uh, we've got a great show tonight. Uh, stepping in for Kerry is my friend Gary Spikes Jr. from oh, Peace. Everyone's doing all right out there tonight. Uh, got uh, uh, volume on, Gary. Anyway. This is why I like to pre-record. <laughs> Sorry, I folks. Know. I know. And uh, are, we, are we okay now? I'm going to go and touch and stuff. Just stop touching things. <laughs> Okay, and um, and our guest, who was on our show in 2019, our third researchers report, and he's back, and it's uh, Sean Wilson from Nebraska. How are you doing, Sean? Better than I deserve. Really? I don't believe that. Well, um, uh, thanks for coming on, guys. Before absolutely. we start, please keep it clean in the chat. Um, I know kids are watching. I'm sure. You'll all be behaving yourselves anyway, uh, like you normally do. Um, so, Sean, you you came on, like I say, 2019, and I vaguely remember it back then. But you were had quite a few. In, you've had a, quite a wild encounter, if I remember. There was a lot going on. Uh, um, well, it was it was wild for me, but it wasn't like uh, it was nothing like Carrie's Carrie's experience. I mean, it it was it was a traumatizing yeah like that but i didn't have that uh <laughs> carries is probably the most incredible encounter i've ever heard because of what he went through and when he tells the story um i knew he knew what i was feeling i knew that he knew what i went through mm -hmm. and i reached out to him i talked to some other guys too and uh that's how i ended up meeting that guy right there uh, mm -hmm. yes <laughs> you know, just if you search out people that, that have had experiences and people that aren't going to think you're crazy, you know. And even but, if um, the encounters aren't on the same level, the feeling is. Oh, yeah. The, the feeling afterwards doesn't matter how, what degree of what you saw or whatever. That feeling right. is, is the same for everybody. So it's great that you've managed to connect with people uh on that level yeah you know? yeah you, you'd need a support system it's it's almost like uh <clears throat> if you you either you ignore it and act like nothing happened or you reach out and you you find help you find people that can keep you from you know thinking you're crazy oh. but um yeah you know and, and gary here he's a, this is this is a fantastic person good man Good man to talk to about this stuff too, but um, let's see. Uh, my family's going off upstairs. Can you guys talk for just a second? Give me one minute, and I'll be right back. Yeah, no my, problem. My... I'm gonna put you Thanks. on uh, um, mute. Uh, well, before we start, then G Gary, you've got something new coming to your oh, channel. You do that to me. I am doing it now to you. Yeah, it's, it's a trade skills. Yeah, we're we're fixing to start a new line. You know, everybody knows that we're big with Bigfoot, but we're fixing to start a new line of shows, a series of shows for folks. Uh, I wanted to be able to give back to the folks that support us. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, anybody that has a hobby or a skill set, whether you're a musician, photographer, crochet, leatherworking, anything, your job. I, I've got a, a show lined up with an insurance claims adjuster. He's going to come on and talk about how insurance companies actually scam people. Uh, we're going to have another one come on about uh, with a car salesman, but we're, we're going to do a, tra a skills tra a trade skills show where you have a 30 minute platform for each person. Two people come on at a time and you get 30 minutes to describe what you know what you what you do and show your expertise in it then the next person does theirs and then at the end we have like a comparison of the two and have a question and answer uh i just thought it would give the folks what, what no matter what it is you know gunsmithing yeah. archery tracking cooking that was interesting anything you know uh just well, send me, go ahead i'll put a link up later on then for people to get in touch with you yeah if yeah anyone wants to come on and get in touch with you to do it uh, I'm going to be doing it, so yep. uh, it's going to be good. That one is. Uh, but look, thanks, Sean. Have you have your family all? Set? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My girlfriend just got home, and there was a bunch of commotion. I just wanted to let her know that I was doing a show, and 
keep the kids from running down here and bugging me. So, cool. all right. Well, do you want to tell us about your encounter then? Okay. And, uh, when, when did it happen? Where were you at? It happened uh, in 2019, October. I'm into it. No, two, that was it. Eight. I think it was 2000. It must have been 2018 because it was you were 2000. On. It was October of 2008. It was October of 2018, and uh, I'll 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 kind of run through what happened again. Um, that that uh, before season, I always go out and I check all my hunting stands and and uh, make sure everything's secure. Put cameras out and stuff like that. Put mineral licks in certain places. Keep them coming through. Keep the deer coming through. And uh, so anyway, I'm, I'm going to uh, build a bridge over this washout because this one particular stand that I have, um, it it had it had been raining pretty bad and and it had just a big washout occurred there and I couldn't get to my stand without going up to a bedding area and circling back in. The only other way was just too much of a hike. It was too, too far out of the way. So I built, I was literally going out there to build a bridge. And um, like I said, it had been raining. It rained the night before as I'm walking next to the corn um, to my left, I'm, I'm walking in carrying lumber and a bag of tools. And uh, I saw a footprint in the, in the mud but this thing was like i can't even back up far enough to show you how big it was i mean it was huge it was like 20 at least 20 around 20 inches 19 20 somewhere in there and i've got pictures of it somewhere people people get on me and say well why didn't you put your foot next to it and take a picture and i didn't think to do that because i didn't believe in bigfoot you know i didn't have any knowledge of any of this i didn't know anything about any of this all i I saw the TV show where the idiots would go out and smack on the wood and that, but you know, anyway, that, that weirded me out. And I'm thinking, is this some drunk farmer slid in the mud with his, you know, what, how did this happen? <clears throat> anyway, I go to the stand, I put up the cameras, I check it and I'm in the back of my head. That is just so weird. I go around to another stand that I have. It's just across the field and it's down in a ditch and in the bottom of this ditch i see another footprint but it's much smaller about like yay big i guess probably eight nine inches seven between seven and nine and this one really had a lot of it was it had good definition and there was another one up above it but it wasn't as good going up the hill um and i took pictures of those too and then, so I go to my tree stand there and I climb up my stand and the bark has been ripped off my tree, uh, this uh, cottonwood tree in like five inch strips from the seat of the tree stand up as high as you can reach standing there. And then if you go up further the tree, you'd have to climb up the tree on the left hand side. There's old rebar on the tree from when I had a stand way high in this tree years and years before this. Uh, you could hang onto the rebar on one side, but it, it looked like it, whatever did this went up and peeled the bark off in another five inch strip way further up the tree. And um, that was just weird. This wasn't an old uh, dying tree by any means. This was a healthy cottonwood tree with thick, hardy bark. And there's no, you can't just peel that off. It's not, not an easy thing to do. That just was weird. Um, some people have said it's a lightning strike, but I don't, I don't believe it was. I've never seen a lightning strike do anything like that to a tree. There was no burn marks or anything like that. And it, it was clearly, the stuff was just like, just all of this tree bark was sitting on the, my seat, my tree standing on the ground underneath me. All right. So I thought that was really weird, but I still wasn't thinking Bigfoot. I wasn't thinking Sasquatch at all at this point. Um, Fast forward, uh, hunting season starts and I'm in my other stand. I've got three or three stands in this particular square and I'm in the far corner. Um, and there's, there's, uh, I'm trying to put everything in order. This has been a couple of years. So, okay. Yeah. So there's a, a small tree 
down to my left and the top of this tree has been snapped off and then jammed into the wound of the tree and it made a perfect T, you know, it's perpendicular, it's just level like that. That was really weird. To my right, there's a tree break, there's a twist that's about 12 feet up, twist, it's twisted and broke and you can see how it's splintered. You can see the, the break. Still, I'm not, you know, I'm not fully, I'm not, I'm starting to think something, but I don't know what I'm thinking. Um, and then let me back up before it, even before this, about five years previous to this. So like eight or nine years ago, I got screamed at down there and I didn't know what it was. My friends were telling me, oh, it's just foxes or a screech owl or, you know, they, these animals down here make weird, weird noises. This wasn't anything like anything like that. I listened to everything I could find online. When that happened, I didn't hunt anymore that year because it freaked me out. But I went back the next year and um, nothing else like that ever happened again. But if looking back now, I've heard plenty of tree knocks. I've heard whoops. Um, I've been screamed at. Um, it's just connecting oh, with knocks, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go back and you think about stuff and, and it all kind of ties together. I had a doe um, look like she'd been ran. But it wasn't breeding season yet. It wasn't even close. It was really, it was still hot. It was like late September. And this doe comes running to my tree stand. She sees me and she beds down right next to my tree stand and just falls asleep. It was crazy. And she was, I mean, that's what I was after. I was there to harvest a doe. I just couldn't do it. I'm do not going to shoot an animal like that. Do you think that maybe since you've had, you know, recessive area, you know, in the, the you know recent activity in that area. Also, do you think that maybe they're coming in because of your deer hunting? Maybe I don't know. Because that's be. that's not a real remote area, there is it? Uh, yeah, it is. It is, and it's not. I mean, it's there's little farm plots here and there, but I mean, yeah. you've got acres and acres and acres between houses ah. and, and, and farms and stuff like this. It's, it's uh, just west of Douglas, or I'm sorry, east of Douglas, Nebraska, about a mile where I hunt. And um, but anyway, I'll get to the meat of the story. So I'm just connecting dots now. Now, uh, somewhere in the middle of this, I started listening to, um, I, I Googled Bigfoot. Because I found the foot, oh, I found another footprint on the other side too. So I've got three different size footprints. They're all very legible. You can tell that these are humanoid. They look like people tracks. Just the one was massive. It was huge. The other two could have been people, as far as I, you know, could tell. Because I, I don't know about the mid tarsal break and any of that by now, or then. <clears throat> but, um. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm putting everything. Okay. Well, there's a lot there to put together. Mm. Right. Years. So, uh, yeah, I Google, I Google the Bigfoot and I'm, and I'm thinking, and then I start watching all these videos and man, I figured the Bigfoot world is weird. It is weird. And, uh, I started listening to, um, Sasquatch Chronicles and, uh, the encounters there. And it started, it started making more sense to me, like, well, maybe this is a Bigfoot, you know, maybe, maybe that's going on here. A lot of these people sound pretty credible. And I grew up in the Rocky Mountains. I grew up in Denver. I moved here when I was 30. So I grew up hunting in the Rocky Mountains where, you know, if you're going to see a Bigfoot, that's where you're going to see a Bigfoot, right? Mm. I, moved, I moved to Nebraska and I see a Bigfoot. How That is so, I mean, anyway, but they're here. Uh, I'm not the only person. I know people here um, uh, that that have had verified. I mean, to me, verifiable. I know they're good people. I know they wouldn't lie about this. So they're here. Um, as far as when I saw the one that I saw, I'll get I'll get to that. Uh, so I, I'm thinking maybe Bigfoot, but I don't. I'm not convinced. You know, because Bigfoot's a legend. It's it's whatever. I've been saving up money to buy a new crossbow, which is actually right there. If you can see that, if 
by my kids' uh-huh. dolls. Uh huh. All right. So, yeah. I've been saving money for that crossbow. I did a side job that cost me fourteen hundred dollars, and uh, it was my first time out. It was I was I couldn't. I was so excited to hunt with that. Um. I get out there. It's the last day before rifle season opens this particular property i can't hunt during rifle season i have to leave another guy comes in who's a friend of the family he gets it for that week the 10 days so i have to leave so i I get out there too late it's the last day before he gets to hunt i know that if i walk down there i'm going to bust anything that's coming through and they're just going to run so i decide to pull up in the field i pull up into the field and i'm facing kind of north east a little bit and I decide I'm just going to roll down my window and I'm going to glass the field and just kind of see what's going on, see where they're, if I can pattern the deer, see what's happening. Cause it's, to this point, I've got some stuff on my game cams, but it's only the only good action has been late at night. I haven't seen anything good during the day. Um, orbs. I've got pictures of orbs on my game, on my game cams. Uh, big, a big red one too. Weird. Um, uh, which I hadn't connected any, any dots. I'm just thinking these are, you know, some weird natural occurrence with camera, whatever. So anyway, I'm, I'm in my pickup truck, um, glass in the field. I'm fiddling with my phone, looking at Facebook and, you know, listening to the radio and stuff like that. And glass in the field. And I keep just going up and down, looking as far out as I can and looking at the trees coming into the property from the adjacent property and all the way down and just trying to figure out which way they're coming and going and stuff, because this guy is only going to be there for 10 days and then it's mine again. And if he, you know, he blows it and they're still out there, well, I still have a shot. Um, and I, I continue to bow hunt through rifle season and I'll, I rifle hunt occasionally too. And I black powder hunt, but at different properties and, they've never been as productive as this particular property. So I like to go back to this property. Um, all right. So I'm, I'm glass in the field and I'm not seeing any deer at all. I'm not seeing anything, but I, I come up the tree line and then I come up the property divide line that divides. We have corn on our side, but it's all cut out at this point. There's no corn left. It's just an open field with the trees that are down in there. And on the other side is beans. And uh, in the middle, there's tall grass and bushes. And and, uh, there used to be, there's pieces of fence, old barbed wire fence that are there in chunks here and there. But I kind of go up the middle of that and I'm looking at the trees beyond it. And I'm looking through up the property divide line. And all of a sudden I see something. And I, I focus in on it and there it is. I can see this face. Now, I'm only seeing it from here up. I don't see the chin down, but from here up, I can see the face. And it's peeking out of this bush that's in the property divide. It's only 30 yards away from me, 30 yards. And I'm starting to get goosebumps thinking of, because I can see it in my head right now. Um, <clears throat> so I'm staring at this thing, and I'm just... I'm in shock. I'm in shock. It's, it's real. It's, it, it is what I, it is Bigfoot. That's, that's what's going on here. Holy cow. Uh, I'm trying not to swear. Cause I know this is a family, family friendly show. Um, <laughs> but I'm, I'm thinking other things that yeah. the, the oh, any, anyway, a lot of curse words are going through my mind at this point. Has it spotted you? I think, I think the way that my truck was positioned and the sun was going down, this is twilight. This is right before dark. Um, It's, it's that, that ambient light that, you know, it's just going to be, it's going to be dark in 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, I think that the sun was hitting my windshield. There must've been a glare that he could not see me looking at him because I was looking through my windshield at the side of my truck. I'm looking down my property where I can hunt and over here through my windshield, I, that's I can't hunt that so I'm mainly focused on where I can my windows down and I'm looking out clearly through here and then I'm looking through my windshield with the binoculars at this thing's face I drop the binoculars and I look without the binoculars and I can still see it 
um, I can't make out the de the definition and stuff like I could with with the binoc the binoculars, but I can still see it. It's real. It's there. Holy cow! Put the binoculars up again. I get dialed in on him again, and I'm looking at him for I don't know ten seconds or whatever, and he blinks. And when he blinked, the reality of what I was seeing, it it just it lit me up. It, it was adrenaline. It was fear. It was. Uh, it, it was, it was just, it was, a, it was, I've only felt <clears throat> fear like that once before, but it, that's a whole different story. Um, so anyway, what I did is I started my truck and I thought, all right, I'm going to make this thing run. I'm going to drive right at it and I'm going to jump him up and make him run so I can see him run away from me. I didn't think to take a picture. I didn't think to, I, none of that crap went through my mind. I didn't, it didn't even dawn on me to to do that because I probably could have got a pretty decent picture of this thing at 30 yards. Mm. I mean, at least you, with my phone, you could have, we could have, you could have blown it up. You could have given it to one of your, um, and one of the, yeah. And Alan, and they could have probably got a really good picture mm. out of this. And I, I wish I would have now, but that's hindsight. Not the first thing on your mind, is it? I don't think. No, it's, it, it's not. I mean, now, now it is now I, I would, be a little bit more prepared to do that um oh that's nice i just got a nice message uh in, anyway so i i drive and i probably only drive 10 feet of 10 yards not that far and like i said it's only 30 yards from me and i i hit the brakes uh that fear stopped me because all i've got is a nine millimeter my concealed carry handgun in my pickup truck in this crossbow across the room for me right here. If this is a Bigfoot, it could rip the door off, pull me out and eat me. Why am I doing this? And it didn't run. So after 10 feet of it, not running, I didn't see anything get up and take off. I stopped backed up and I looked straight at that same bush and, um, it was gone. Now what I believe it did is just, it must've hit its belly and just laid flat in the grass there because I went back the next, well, it wasn't the next day. It was a couple days later. Was it the next? No, it wasn't the next day. I was still too freaked out. I didn't sleep that night at all. I actually wrote Wes, um, Wes Germer <clears throat> that night when I got home and he got back to me right away and I did his show. And I was so, if you listen to that show, it's a member show. Uh, you can tell I was just sleep deprived and, and I was a mess. I was, I was just a wreck, but seeing what you've seen has a tendency to do that to people. Yeah. It did. Well, me. yeah, <laughs> it messed me, it messed my head up because all of a sudden something that's not supposed to be real is real. And I'm not, I'm no longer the apex predator. I'm a, I'm a rabbit at this point. I'm not the big bad boy in the woods anymore. I mean, I've got, we've got cougars down there and coyotes and stuff like that, but I'm not really scared of cougars or coyotes. I am scared of this. Oh Yeah. Um, I, they, it's, it's terrifying to me, but I still, I still hunt. Uh, it was really hard, really hard to get back out there. And I don't, I don't have the same, uh, I don't have the peace I had when I went out there before. I don't have, I don't enjoy it, but I'm not going to let, I'm not going to let it, uh, take away something that I've been doing my whole life. Mm. I'm just not. So yeah. You can't. After after talking to Wes and Carrie, uh, Will Jevening, of course, um, some other fine people. Um, I've, I've been hunting since. Not as much. I'm not. I don't hunt as much as I used to, but I still go, and I will continue to. Uh, I try not to go alone, though. I try to have a partner with me. I've got a buddy that lives down in the area. He's retired. He's a friend of mine. He doesn't believe me at all. Um. He grew up down there. He's been there his whole life and he thinks I'm full of baloney, but it is what it is. Um, yeah. But uh, I, would you like me to describe what I saw of the face? I was going to say, based on the size of the head, how big do you think this thing was? Or what was your th thoughts at the time? Uh, my, 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 my thoughts at the time was it's, it's a Bigfoot. That's all I could think. Mm. Um, after going back, and looking at where it was, 
<clears throat> it had to be down on its haunches or down on its knees looking at me through this bush to see because I got right in there where he was. The It was all flattened out. It was all mm -hmm. flat. And there, were, and there was a footprint, too. Just one footprint. It was a right footprint. Anyway, it couldn't have they... been much. It couldn't have been much bigger than me. But uh, my size eleven boot was about the same size as his footprint. So I don't believe it was too much bigger than me, if at all. Um, probably a juvenile. It wasn't the little little one that tore the bark out of my other tree, and it certainly wasn't the huge one because that thing would have dwarfed the bush. Uh, what I saw was a dark charcoal gray, wrinkly. The forehead was real wrinkly, like like gorilla skin. Um, dark charcoal, black eyes. I couldn't see whites of the eyes at all. There was no whites. It, it, it looked all black. But see, my dog Jack, I look at his eyes too. And when I look at him straight on like that, I can't see the whites of his eyes either. So maybe maybe they're just dark brown. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But it looked, it looked soulless. This thing had no expression on its face whatsoever. It was just looking at me and blinked. And uh, the nose, th this is the funny thing, is it's the same nose that Carrie Arnold described in his encounter. It looked like Scotty Pippen's nose. Right. And uh, some guy called me out and he said, ah, you're making this crap up because you saw what Carrie saw and you're, you saw his show and you're just looking for attention or something like that. And I'm like, no, we just saw a similar looking guy, I think. But. Well, people say that it's like the worst sort of attention you could want, isn't it? You know, seeing yeah. a big foot, you know, yeah, yeah. I've got a bunch of, a bunch of my friends think I'm crazy now and, and all my hunting buddies think I'm nuts and, and people at work and, I'm not, I'm not shy about it. I don't go out and wear Bigfoot t-shirts and I don't have Bigfoot stamp on my truck or anything like that. I'm not like a, one of those guys, but I am a, a, you know, I'm very interested in the subject and I've studied a lot and, and uh, teamed up with Gary here and, and uh, Jeremiah Fountain and some other good men and other groups. And uh, I've talked to Gary several times, not several, a handful of times. Yeah. Gary's a great guy. So if you're listening to this, Kerry, thanks for having us on. Um, he's, uh, I think he's in the chat. He was in the chat earlier. He was earlier yeah. 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 So, uh, I think well, is that Christopher Noel? I think Christopher Noel just sent a message. He's oh. a good. He's a good dude too. Uh, not for sure. <laughs> you know, Sean. In, in response to you know everybody saying that you're crazy, you know we've said it in private a bunch, and I guess we could go ahead and say it in public. You know. I don't know how many times me and you looked at each other or had some serious in-depth conversations and say, we wish we could forget what we saw. Yeah. Uh, if, uh, it's just if, dramatic. Yeah. If, if I could go back and unsee that, I would. Oh yeah. hundred percent. I would, I would take the blue pill in a second because it took away a lot from me. The moment it happened and the moment that I realized what I saw, well, I'll finish describing the face, um, big, big black eyes, um, flat nose, kind of pointy. Um, good distance between the nose and the top lips, and that's all I saw. I saw the cheeks. There was hair here, and the 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 hair started about probably here on the head, and it went up into a cone. And right. it was it was hair. It wasn't like uh, animal fur. It was mm -hmm. hair, uh, and it it had a beard. It was bearded on the side and like that. So yeah. Uh, really wide, wide, wide mouth. Looked like it could probably put its mouth over a watermelon. It was mm. huge. I didn't, I didn't notice ears, not to say, but I was kind of fixated on the eyes. I was trying to find expression in the eyes and there was none. Um, so after, after I saw the guy uh, or gal, I don't know if it was a male or a female, um, drove towards it, backed up, and I decided to split. So I got on the road and I, I drove around the corner and I drove up around where my other hunting stands are, which is just on the other side of the farm, but I'm out on the main roads driving and I pull over and, uh, I called my girlfriend who's upstairs. We've been together for 15 years. Um, at the time I'd lived in a different house. We were sort of separated, uh, Anyway, I, I called her up and I was I was crying at this point because I was I was I was freaked out 
I knew I couldn't hunt anymore. Um, couldn't take my kids hunting. Uh, monsters are real. Mm. You know, uh, so I'm crying and I'm telling her what I saw. And she had me on speakerphone. They were in the car and her and the kids laughed at me. And I hung up. I hung up and I. That's that's one of those things. She still doesn't. She respects me enough to she knows that I do these shows and we have our show and, and stuff like that. And she knows that I research and and uh, something that I'm into. She kind of gives me my privacy with it. She doesn't. We just don't talk about it. Um, but they laughed at me, and that that really uh, I kind of messed my head up. And that's when I, I went home and I and I wrote to uh, Wes Wes Germer and I and I uh, he got me on right away, and it was very relieving to talk to somebody that would listen and, and not judge and just listen to me talk because I needed someone to tell. I had to tell somebody, I don't know how people bottle this stuff up. You know, you hear a lot of people uh, just don't say nothing and they don't do anything about it. They act like it never happened. I'm, I'm not that kind of person. I can't do that. Um, I think I'd go, I'd go mad if I had to hold that in. You know, and if I still held it in, if I acted like it wasn't real, I'd lose, I'd, I'd go mad. You, you, I think you're right. You know, with, with my sighting, you know, you, of course, you know, I can't, I told my dad and my dad believed me right off the bat and, you know, my wife, but it, it's a hard pill to swallow. Like you said earlier, you know, when, uh, you know, people scoff you about it. And then that's usually what happens is somebody has a sighting and they, and they talk to somebody about it and they, they laugh at them. And then they don't say nothing about it. It makes you wonder how, you know, we've discussed this a lot. It makes you wonder how many people are, have refused to come out and say something and how many reports, creditable people are having reports, but they won't, they won't come out and say it. Well, a you lot know. of people. Yeah. And uh, that, um, oh, the how to hunt guy, Steve Isdall. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, his approach to some of this is kind of a little harsh and backwards, but he's doing a good thing by um, he's giving people that won't go on shows or whatever. He's giving them a platform. And, and I think that's good because the more people come forward and the more people talk about this openly, the, the less taboo it gets and the easier it gets for us. And some, somehow we have to get this confirmed, you know, um, well, yeah, I think that right. the, the main, the main goal is to get this confirmed. So, what happened to me and what happened to you doesn't happen to the next guy. If you, if people know they're out there and they know what to watch out for. And we treat these things like grizzly bears, or we come up with a, 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 a Bigfoot plan. plan. You know, yeah. if you run into Bigfoot, this is what you do. You know, I mean, if people went out and are armed with that knowledge, then they wouldn't be traumatized. Yeah. They wouldn't have sleepless nights. They wouldn't be freaked out. I, I but I have to wonder why, why the government keeps this under wraps. What's the, what's the deal? You know, and that's when you get into the whole kind of woo side of it. And... I lost well, my connection there. Sorry. Go on, I'm back. Uh, you know, you said something, Sean, that I think is a, a real good point. You know, there's like two camps of people that have eyewitness accounts like you, me, Carrie, and a few others out there. Ours was quite terrifying. And then you have the folks that have them that are, drawn to them and mm -hmm. i i you know you're the one that really got me thinking more about the spiritual side of things and, and the more of the the woo side of things about this you know me and you've been talking about this for a couple of years now mm -hmm. but uh I, I wonder if if maybe there is a forecasting dilemma here you know maybe there maybe they can forecast a feeling of 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 how would we say uh, non fear because I, I didn't feel nothing forecasting to me and it scared the living far out of me. But uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, if yeah. it was forecasting as anything, it's forecasting you get the heck out of my woods or I'm going to snap you like a twig, you know. But yeah, you know, I didn't, I didn't get any of that there, but um, it was fear. It was fear. I did, uh, I did experience uh, more in another area. There's another farm. Um, the next year that I hunted and I, I rifle hunted with a friend of mine and there was, we heard an owl, but it wasn't an owl. 
you know, we I know what an owl sounds like. This wasn't an owl. It was it was like an owl monkey, a monkey owl. It, and my buddy Sparky, he's a he's a local radio disc jockey guy here in Lincoln, Nebraska. He does the afternoon show on the Blaze. He's my hunting partner for rifle. I take him down there, and uh, he looked at me and he said, "That's not an owl, is it?" And I showed him all these tree structures. I've got tees all over the property at this particular property, and it's there's a big ditch um, where a canal runs, and I believe that's where they travel. The, the Bigfoot traveled these canals. Mm. But my my that's my uh, best guess anyway. You know, during it the day, sense, it, though, it? yeah, it's, it's a nobody goes down in there, and nobody's in these fields except for you know twice a year when they're planting. Or they're harvesting. Yeah, you know, and that's and that's it. The rest of the time, they're empty. There's nobody in there, and there's pockets of woods. These little oases is in every one of these farms, all over the place. So these animals have they've got food, they've got water, they've got shelter, they've got shade, they've got everything they need to survive here, and they don't have people, except for the hunters and the farmers. And the farmers, you know, uh, I, I wonder what farmers have seen and don't talk about. Um, my, my, my buddy that, uh, farms the property, he doesn't own the property that I hunt. He's heard him. Um, he's seen, he's seen orbs out there and he saw a spaceship once. So, you know, if you want to get weird, we can get real weird. Uh, I'll just, but let, he, sorry, go on. I'm sorry, but, uh, yeah, he's, he's a real credible guy. He wouldn't BS me about anything. He wouldn't. And I told him about the Bigfoot. I'm just like, listen, you farm this place. And I've known you for how many years now? 20? I, I just, I don't want you to think I'm crazy, but I want you to know what's on your property. Just, you know, beware. There, there are mm -hmm. things out there that, that aren't supposed to be out there, you know? Mm -hmm. And whether he believes me or not, I don't, I don't know, but he didn't, he didn't treat me disrespectfully in any way. So. Yeah. It's a shame about your other, you know, other people that have laughed and things like that, but it, at the end of the day, you've planted that seed because who knows what, well, maybe one day they will see a track or something and maybe it will connect what you said. I, it's I would, hard, I, isn't it? I'd love to take them down there and show them the tree structures mm -hmm. and, and, and especially the one area there, there are a lot of times what these farmers will do, they'll, they'll cut down trees and they'll push the fields back. You know, they'll, they'll try to push the trees in, and there's, there's uh, cut down logs that you can harvest for firewood or whatever. Well, a lot of these cut down logs are jammed 15 feet up in a tree and stuck in the, in the Y, mm -hmm. in the Y of a tree, just like that. So you've got this big T. These are all over the place out there. Um, I've got one X. I don't know if that has anything to do with them or not. It could be completely coincident. It may have fallen that way, but it's a perfect X. Um, but T's, I've got a lot of T's. I call them T's. I don't know what, what a, anybody else would call them, but they look like T's to me. So I call them T's. Oh. Um, they're everywhere in breaks. Um, and one in particular, I've got, and I, t I take pictures of all this stuff. I've got them somewhere. In fact, Jeremiah had sent him all my pictures and he was, he was like, wow, that's, that's a lot of stuff. Um, I'd love to take people down there and just show them and, t and t explain to me how that happened. How did that get up there? Did a tornado pick all these up and put them up in those trees like that all over the place? A farmer didn't do it. Uh, you couldn't do it without heavy equipment or pulleys and ropes. And, and I mean, you'd have to be like a, a specialist and an arborist or something. I don't mm -hmm. know. And why, why would you do that? Yeah. Um, big, big shelters too. Um, not teepees, but you can see there's uprooted trees that are flipped upside down. So the root ball is in the air, leaning against other trees and then other deadfall all stacked around with one side open. And I think they use those as cover when they're hunting. So they're natural, natural lines that these guys, these Bigfoot put together to hunt. That's my hypothesis with these things anyway. And those, there's a bunch of those and they're huge, you know, they're just huge all yeah. over the place now sean didn't you have one come in on your on your deer stand at one time uh yeah i 
I was in the stand that I built the ladder for and I had smelled something. It smelled like a dirty dish rag, real strong. Like it, 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 I remember this smell from when I was a kid, because when you're a kid, you're lazy and you don't do, you know, but you let a dish rag sit in the sink too long and it just gets really stinky. That's what I smelled. It smelled like a dirty dish rag. Um, something was busting through the corn towards me big time. Like you could see it, I could hear it and it was like stomping through and then just stopped. And then I, I was just waiting and I was staring down and I didn't know what to think, but I was scared. I got out of my tree and I got out of there. So I, that's not confirmed. I don't know what it was. It, it was either a whole bunch of deer that just came in and stopped or it was one big animal. Mm. So, you know, all those things you were finding around you, you, the day stand, the ripped bark and all that, what do you think that was about? Were they trying to to get you out of there, do you think, then? Give me one second, guys. All right. What? One minute. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's... Um, what he was saying about his girlfriend just laughing about it. It's, you know, it took me a while to really realize just how much these things are affecting people. Yeah. You know, it takes a while for the penny to drop that, how serious, you know, it is. And it's sad that, you know, it's, it's a wild story, isn't it? When you first hear about it, your first reaction is that's incredible or, you know. Yeah. How can you believe that? I mean, it's natural, isn't it, I guess? Especially for us, you know, and people don't understand that, you know, us as hosts, we have, to me, a commitment to people like Sean and people like me, you know, that's had these eyewitness accounts, no matter how crazy they may sound, to respond with each one accordingly. You know, uh, you know, I used to be, when I first started, I was straight up primate, you know, straight up naturalist and and the more i get into this you know and you hear me say it all the time and sean was you know the really the one that really got me thinking about it because before i knew sean had these experiences i got to know sean so i got to know his word was you know his, there was no question in his credibility and when we started walking this path together it really opened my eyes as a, as a naturalist type host that maybe there is more to this than what this guy knows and, and, and how we respond to that directly correlates. The, the, when you see one of these, it's a life-changing experience, literally. I mean, you can ask Carrie, you can ask Sean, you can ask me, ask any of the folks that's seen them. It is a life-changing experience. And it can make or break. It can really affect people if you laugh at them or if you come across, oh, that's the biggest bunch of malarkey I've ever heard, you know. And, and I think us as hosts, we have a commitment to hold that line of neutrality definitely oh yeah you gotta you gotta listen to everybody and hear them out i i was i was the same way um uh as far as flesh and blood and it's got to be a monkey and everything like that um that's exactly what i thought it's got to be the missing link it's just it's just an animal that's undiscovered but the more i'm the more stories i hear the more people i interview the more people i talk to about this good credible people are telling me that they see that it's there and it's gone or it mm. stepped out of a portal or it came out of an orb you know and either there's a whole lot of people that just really want some weird attention or there's some truth to it and only only one of these people has to be right yeah mm. you know out of the, the thousands that have that have talked about these strange woo uh, mm. experiences. Well, you know? The, the, you know, Sean, I love how you said it a year ago, you know, I mean, you got in that, that discussion, you know, on one of my shows of, of maybe hardline naturalist primate, you know, flesh and blood. And you was over here and, and you said, how can you not keep in mind an open mind about this when you're a paranormal researcher? You believe in demons. You believe in spirits. You believe in all of this. Right. How can you? 
how can you not keep an open mind about it? And that, you know, that was an eye opener for me, you know, it just, but one thing I wanted to bring up that you, you touched on earlier that I think uh, Daniela, we we've talked about a bunch and she actually mentioned it too. When you had that first sighting or the first experience, your, your whole vocabulary changes and you start looking and then you start noticing more and more yeah. and more. And it's like, how many times have we walked by a perfectly good sign and not even think that could have been a Sasquatch until it's brought to our attention. And right. I, I don't think that there's a increase of activity. I think it's an increase of opening eyes, looking yeah. at the activity informed eyes. Yeah. I, I think these things have been there the whole time. Especially yeah. in your case. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if they habituate the area or if they just travel through and hunt there or, you know, I don't know, you know, nobody knows. We don't know. I don't know if they, if they can, um, you know, uh, pop in and out of this realm from somewhere else or I just don't know. And I'm, I'm going to keep an open mind and one day the truth will be told and, and we will know hopefully sooner than later, you know, uh, but uh, yeah, you know, like you said, I think we're in we're in this to to, to a give give it give it some credibility and b help other people that have gone through what I've gone through and see it it helps me um, to to talk about it because you know it's still one of those things that it's still not supposed to be real but there it is yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah. And just going back to what you're both saying, you, you know, how many accounts have we heard? And I've said this before that we're, we're not hearing even half of the details because people don't want to to say it. I think you probably right. just said that. I've just been the B, the BFRO suppresses a whole lot. What people mm -hmm. go to them first because they're the biggest known, you know, entity about Bigfoot. So people go to them and then they try to tell them their story. Well, when it gets weird at all, they shut them down. And they don't even get reported. So, if the weird, I don't care what what people have to say. I don't if I'll listen to anybody and I'll give them I'll give them a, a fair a fair shot. You know, I'm not yep. gonna I'm not gonna judge anybody. I saw a Bigfoot. People think I'm crazy. Let's hear what you saw. What happened? You know, we can go down the Dogman Trail. We can go we can go all over the place. There's stuff out there that that's not supposed to be out there. And it's, it just is. That's how it is. Yeah. There's a, a lot of stories out there, accounts that, like you say, we just can't ignore. Uh, I mean, no, I don't know. No. Yeah. And giving, yeah. A pe giving people a platform to, to talk on, talk openly and freely about it is, is pretty cool. Mm. Uh, I really love Kerry uh, for doing what he does. He's, he's one of the guys in this, deal that I, I probably respect the most. Um, we've yeah. got a pretty good little team going. We're just, we're kind of me and me and Gary and uh, Jeremiah, we do a little show and it's fun. We get people on and give them a chance to talk and just go over things. And uh, Oh, one more thing. I'm wearing my ZZ Top concert <laughs> T-shirt from 2014. Rest in peace, Dusty Hill. That's too bad he died today. Yeah, to sucks. get that out there. It sucks. They've been talking about it in the chat, and I've been, yeah. Yeah, Rich Evans is his probably number one fan. Yeah. Um, and Richie, uh, Sean, sorry, Sean's uh, was on uh, research report number three. You were asking before what episode it was, so it was uh, way back. I pretty Maybe much told correct. the exact same story I told here. Right. But well, that'd be interesting to little refresher, I guess. I yeah. don't know. I haven't. I've, I don't think I've told it much since. Um, but but other things other things have happened. Uh, like I said, where I rifle hunt, and we heard that owl. Uh, we found a roadkill. There was a small buck dead up on the road, and I was just curious. So. I drug that thing right down to the edge of the woods and I left it there and the next day it was gone. Now here's the funny thing. There was snow on the ground. You could see where I drug it in. You could see 
pretty there was patches where it was dry but it was mo there was a lot of snow coyotes weren't there there was no coyote tracks there was no leftover car there was no nothing there was the whole, something picked this thing up and took off with it and didn't leave any footprints so there's a real weird woo thing uh we do have big cats in the area people deny that there's big cats we have them i've got prints i've seen them they're down there but uh it wasn't a cat you would have seen drag marks and it would have been half buried pretty close to there and it would have been half eat I looked all over the place for that deer and it was not there. So something took it. And um, another night in particular, I was called down by another friend who was bow hunting that area. He shot a buck and he couldn't find it. So I helped him track it that night. We were out with flashlights and uh, just a little bit of blood, a little bit of blood here and there. He got, it was a bad shot. He, it was a really bad shot. We searched for hours and hours and hours and all of a sudden, dread dread hit me like i was freaked out um i didn't have a gun i had a flashlight wasn't thinking bigfoot i was trying to help my friend retrieve his deer and i just told him i said we have to leave right now we have to go he i said your deer is gone let's go let's go and he didn't understand but i just i said let's go we're leaving now something was telling me to get the get out get out now and it was like it was the same fear that hit me when I saw the animal. I didn't relate it to anything, but looking back, I think that somehow they were there and they were just telling, maybe they were, maybe they took the deer and they were just saying, bugger off. We're, this is us. We're taking this. It's our kill. You guys leave. He That's didn't get hit. He didn't get hit with the fear, but I did. And I don't yeah. know. It just, it just came on like that. And it lasted until I got to my, well, it lasted until I got to the road and I was on my way out. Mm. I've heard accounts like that. People just saying, something's telling me, just don't go any further. Turn yeah. around, go. Um, it's possible, you know, it's, it is possible. We can emit energy, can't we? We can give off yeah. signs without actually uh, saying anything. Whether yeah. it's pheromones or, or at body actions, you know, it's direct proof with me and my training and my dog. I can literally just look at him and he, he responds. And, you know, humans, if we could get away from our conglomerate mind, you know, or with all the technology and stuff and go back to our more natural instincts, I, I think a lot of hunters have that instinct. I don't know how many times I've been in the woods and, and me and dad just look at each other and say, uh, oh, we're going, it's time to go home. You know, uh, I think it's a more natural than what we think. I think we've just stepped away from it. Yeah, definitely. I would agree with that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Way to support there, folks. <laughs> no, I'm messing with you. No. <laughs> just like, uh, I was just, uh, if anyone's got any questions, put them up in capitals, please. If you've got any questions for Sean. Anybody uh, out in Nebraska, especially, I'd love to love to talk to you. All right, okay. So, shout out for anyone in Nebraska. Um, I'll just have a quick look through. So, I mean, do you actually want to see one again? No. <laughs> but yeah, we go chasing them. <laughs> I, I I look for I look for I'm 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 not a Bigfoot researcher as much as I'm a hunter with a. Uh, uh, I don't know. I'm a researcher. I, I just hate calling myself a researcher. <laughs> anyway, I, I don't want to see one again, you know, and I, I do look for a sign and I go out, look, but I don't want to run into one. I want to see where one just was or maybe see one. Um, distance or something. Yeah. Yeah. If I could get like a, a good video or something like that, I wouldn't, I would love to, but, it wouldn't matter. I mean, it wouldn't matter. You, you could post it and, and immediately it'd be called a, a phony. It's a fake. It's not real. None of it's real. You, you're all full of baloney. That's the thing, it though, isn't it? Doesn't matter. It? I, I could yeah. bring, you could bring a head, you could cut off a dead Bigfoot's head and bring it, bring it into the university and it, it'd be baloney. It wouldn't matter. It'd be covered up. You know, I, I don't know what it's going to take to, to actually get the government to face this. Especially, the, yeah, I'm not going to get into politics, but yeah, 
There's so many questions, isn't there? So many ways you can go with it. But ultimately, what can you do, though? I mean, you know, it's just to keep safe, spread spread a bit of awareness. Uh, you know, in the meantime, what else can we do other than keep doing what we're doing? Because um, right. we're not going to get the answers that we want when we want them, it, it seems. Um, do you think there's any way you could collect any evidence? I mean, the people out there who will test it, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be sent to the government, but I know a couple of people uh, who, three people. Oh, sure. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I could make some hair traps or, or, uh, you know, uh, do things like that. But do you really want to? I, I, I don't think that it makes a difference. I mean, I could, I could have, I could probably have a whole hide, and it wouldn't make a difference. They would say that the DNA has been compromised and that it's it was botched somehow and it, because it shows that there's human DNA. I mean, I think I believe Melba Ketchum. I believe that at, uh, uh, I'm on Scott Carpenter's team when it comes to what these things are. That's that's the way I lean. Um, anyway, mm. I, I don't I don't I, it, I, I don't think it matters what what we come up with. Because the narrative, they, the, we're going to be told what they want us to know when they want us to know it. And pretty much they tell us what we're supposed to think anyway, you know, and it, it doesn't matter. Uh, we're just kooky Bigfoot researchers. We're not, we're not legitimate um, scientists, you know, so legitimate well, science doesn't want to take a look at this and they're paid not to. Mm -hmm. Well, we're doing our bit. We're trying to do our bit. We know it's out there. We know it exists. And, oh, yeah. you know, like I say, let's do what we can as much as we can to, to, to the best of our ability because we're not going to get the answers soon anyway. You know, like you say, we might not ever get them. But in the meantime, there's people like yourselves, like Gary, like Kerry, who are left behind, you know, having to try and work out what the heck this thing is. And um, at least if there's a place for people to come to, uh, yeah. to sh share the stories and just to talk, and if it helps just to talk for someone to listen, that's oh, enough. I, you know, absolutely. That's, that's, that's something. You, so I, I'm glad yeah, you came it, back anybody, on again and shared it. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me. Mm, um, you're welcome. It was nice to be back on the air. We haven't done a show. I haven't done a show in a while. It's nice to talk about it. And, uh, Nice well, to be here with Gary. I, I think buddy. the last show you talked about your experiences was on my show, <laughs> and that's been eight months. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. I, for, I forgot I did that. Huh? I forgot about that, Gary. Yeah, I think that's the last time you actually came on and talked about your, you know, your experiences when we did a uh, when we did my show. Yeah, but uh, you know, you, you made a real good point, and me and Daniela talk about it a lot, and and Daniela and Carrie's talked about it. And I think it's a, a real good subject matter for experiences, researchers. If we do prove them, prove their existence, what then? People, What's going to happen? You don't have all these people rushing into the woods to kill them. Uh, I don't know about that. I mean. I don't think we have that, that kind of, I know a lot of people think the, you know, American redneck got to go out there and be macho and prove whatever, but I'm, I am an American redneck and I, I don't want to kill these things. I have no desire to go out and kill these things. I just, I want people to know they're out there. Yeah. You know, like, just like I don't hunt grizzly bears. I don't, I don't like bear meat. I've had it. I don't care for it. I don't have anything to prove. I've got plenty of guns and ammunition and I could probably kill one if I wanted to, but I'd have no desire to do it. And I'm sure there's might be a handful of idiots, but nobody's going to be able to do it because they're not smart enough. These things are so far ahead of us, especially out in the field. Oh yeah. You could probably, you'd probably put a whole army battalion out there going after these guys and they're going to make the army battalion look like idiots. They're just too, they're too, they're too slick in the, in the, in their environment. We're when we, we go out there, we, we probably look like idiots to them. Oh, know? yeah. Uh, I got to respond to Damien Kay's comment about me. He said, uh, you think they'd not exist. I don't think that they exist. 
I know they exist. I've seen one at 18 inches in front of my face and it terrified the hell out of me. Yeah. Sorry about the language. I know they exist. I just worry about what happens to them. You know, I'm in that dilemma of they've protected themselves quite well up until now. If, if we, if we do prove the existence of somebody's going to have to step in and do some conservation. I think that might be part of the reason why they don't. Um, it you know, you, you hear the story that logging would go down and this and that and the other. And, and, you know, a lot of that might be true. They might, they might have to shut down the forest and tourism and parks, national parks yeah. would plummet and, uh, yada 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 but if the, if somebody came out and just said hey they, they're they're real they're out there they haven't they haven't been you know tearing people up yet which i don't know they might but uh this is what you do people still go into grizzly bear territory all the time yep. you know i think i think that it, people would handle it fine just like the spaceships you know that the government is now disclosing by, Finally, finally coming out, and you know we've all known for years oh. that they that they exist, and now it's been confirmed by the government. But I didn't need the government's confirmation, and I don't need their confirmation on this. But I think the general public does. Your your average CNN consumer, you know, the person that watches TV and they get their news from uh, from wow. television, like they need to hear it that way. Mm. Katie G's uh, put some um, dollars in the swear jar for you, Gary. Put it on my tab. <laughs> Thank you, Katie G. Appreciate that. Um, I'll have to. I'll have to settle up with you. <laughs> well, look, if there is anyone f watching now or later from Nebraska, and you're, you know, into Bigfoot, you probably would be if you're here. Um, leave a leave a message in the comments, and Sean, I think, would like to. Or club even connect with anybody who's Absolutely. around the area uh, to, you know, talk a bit more Bigfoot. Um, networking's great, isn't it? You know, it will. It, it, you never know just who you can meet and yeah. uh, what some of it. So there's actually uh, a couple people here in Lincoln that um, that hit me up, and and weirdly enough, like I'm friends with friends that uh, there's. It's, it's a big small town. Lincoln is. Um, but yeah, other people that have had experiences, they contacted me and um, we're supposed to go out. It will happen. Um, and more, the more the merrier, the more people that would like to come out with me. Great. I'd love to show them what, what I've got and the tree structures and stuff like that and do a little, do a little Bigfoot investigating with these folks. That'd be kind of fun. Sounds good. Uh, well, look, we'll have to get with you again. And we'll talk a bit more Bigfoot. Oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. But I do appreciate you coming on and sharing that account again because I'm pretty sure whoever was watching back then probably hasn't seen, hasn't heard, or or known about that account because, uh, like I said, it was a couple 2019. We've got a whole load of new subscribers since then. Oh and, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sure they'll appreciate uh, you coming on and telling that account, and hopefully, you know, you've you've offered a bit of advice to someone or you've encouraged them to talk about it or share it or something. Uh, and you know, that's yeah, a good the, thing. The cork's out of the bottle. It's, it's just, it is. And people need to just be bold. You know, if you've seen something, talk, talk about it, talk about it. There's, there's safe places to talk about it where you won't be ridiculed. And, and there's people that'll listen that won't judge. And I'm one of them. So great. All right. Well, thank you, Sean. Uh, Gary, thank you. Um, I'm going to put a link to Gary's uh, channel in the description. If anyone's interested in doing the trade skills, I think that's a really good idea. Uh, get in touch with Gary and. Um, or yeah. Bigfoot or paranormal. We oh, can't talk about it all. <laughs> yeah, literally <laughs> anything. Literally anything. Uh, so once again, thanks to everyone in the chat. Um, sorry if I've never got to your questions, but um, we'll have Sean on again at some point and we can we can ask him all then. Uh, until the next time, everyone, uh, have a good night. Bye. <laughs>